Yo, what's going on guys? And today I wanted to talk about who will the Miami Heat be signing in free agency. So before we start today's video, as always guys, I would love to hear those fabulous opinions down below. Yes, who do you believe the Miami Heat should sign in free agency to go back to the promised land, the NBA Finals, where they were going against the Los Angeles Lakers less than two years ago? So, let's get into it and let's talk about who's under contract. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo are both under contract. Jimmy making 36 and Bam making 28. And you have Goran Dragic and Andre Iguodala both with player team options, not player options, my apology, that combine for about $34.4 million. Right now, if they accept them, they're at 113.7. If they do not accept them, they're basically under, I think it is, 80 million. They have like, they open up about $33 million in cap space, which I expect them to decline. Maybe they bring back Goran Dragic. Most likely they bring back Goran Dragic on a cheaper deal, maybe under $5 million. And right there, let's let's talk about this. They, they technically have a backup center in Omar Yurta7, who just got extended. And, you know, so right there, he's technically the backup center on roster and they have Preston Achua as their power forward and small ball five you could say maybe but really small ball five Bam Adebayo can play small ball five and I look at this team and I think the two guys that this team would so benefit from signing Spencer Didwitty a lot of people are talking Lonzo Ball but I feel like Lonzo Ball is going to get a big offer from a team like the New York Knicks or maybe the Los Angeles Lakers will somehow reacquire him. Somebody's going to send him an offer that the Heat won't be willing to pay and the Pelicans won't be willing to match. So with that happening, I think Spencer Didwitty is a guy who, at most, he's going to cost $15 million, but I think he can cost between 8 to 15 And if you can get him on the cheap side, right there you have a guy who, in my opinion is an upgrade you have Goran Dragic, Kendrick Nunn, Spencer Didwitty as your point guard rotation and I think that's pretty good it solves the point guard hole your shooting guard do they bring back Victor Oladipo that's the other big question if Victor Oladipo will actually be back on this team I do not expect them to be bringing back Victor but yeah so Right here, you could see them bringing back Trevor Ariza. And Duncan Robinson, I would bring him back if possible, but someone could overpay him and you might not want to bring him back. But yeah, obviously, I think they should bring back Dwayne Dedman, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, Trevor Ariza. You know, Nemja wasn't a bad stre floor stretcher for them. It's just he doesn't offer defense. And Goran Dragic. If they can bring back Andre, that's fine. Somebody might pay him. And I already have the replacement for Andre Iguodala. And that would be Torrey Craig. Torrey Craig, in my opinion, is awesome. Like, first off, this team needs a wing. Like, long guys who clog up the opponent's offense and knock down the occasional shots are great when needing to fill out the roster. The classic 3 and D addition. And a cheap option is Torrey Gregg. He's a solid shooter at 36%, a sound on-ball defender. He also played in 47 post games, shooting 44% from the field and 37% from three in those. So he's a player who has high-pressure games under his belt, experience in those, and knows when to stand up or step up to the challenge in those high-pressure games. Now, look, obviously Lonzo Ball would be cool, but Spencer Didwitty is more realistic. Because if they can get either one of those players, we'll just say both of those players, the reason why, like not they're going to get both, but the thing is, is why I'm talking about those players is they can run the offense and diversify how teams would guard Butler and Bam Adebayo. Adding another talented point guard will also give punch to the second unit if you are pairing a player like Dinwiddie or Ball with Kendrick Nunn or Goran Dragic or Tyler Hero, whoever the second unit is. Dinwiddie is a solid third point guard to put in your three point guard rotation of Kendrick Nunn and Goran Dragic plus he's an unrestricted free agent and who provide ball movement and some modest scoring while Ball is a restricted free agent and he's probably more pricey but he is the better score shooter now I think obviously can they bring back 
Victor Oladipo on a cheap deal. Isn't he going to miss the whole year? I see some Lou Will. It seems like every contending team could benefit from Lou Will. But another guy, that TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell's an underappreciated guy. If they strike out on Dinwiddie and Ball, TJ McConnell, Kendrick Nunn, Gordon Drogic. Not bad. Look, McConnell average 8.6 points per game, 3.7. 8.6 points per game, 3.7 rebounds, 1.9 steals, and 6.6 assists a game. He stole 10 balls. 10 balls in one game one steal away from the nba record okay and he's a guy who would be another pick and roll ball handler and make at bam out of bio a legitimate lob threat and he's not an elite three-point shooter but if you bring in tj mcconnell it's because you're bringing back duncan robinson and basically the whole team like like duncan robinson trevor ariza kendrick nunn dwayne deadman I expect them to bring back Max Struss and Gabe Vincent. I also would like them to look at Malik Monk because they were good. They saw this guy play against them. Look, Malik Monk in the three games against the Heat this past year averaged twenty six point three points, sixty one point four percent shooting, and thirty and like had a thirty six point game against them. So, yes, the guy only averaged. 12 points and he started only once in 233 possible games and averaged 18 minutes a game but there was a 15 minute 15 game stretch where he played at least 25 points 25 minutes a game and he averaged 19.3 points and shot 46.4 percent from three on seven and a half attempts a game and he's not a freaking free throw visitor but i think the pat riley and the guys can make monk a guy by using his powers off the dribble both from the mid-range and long range to maybe start going at the rim, drawing fouls, or getting him out. But yeah, I think it would be really good. And I don't know what a Malik Monk deal is. I think the most somebody would pay him is what Malik Beasley got. But I think he should get like a one-year, $8 million deal. Let me hear what you guys think down below of my Miami Heat. Like, I wouldn't say arguments, but hey, let's, let's hear what you guys think about my Miami Heat takes. But yeah, that, that's basically it for me today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Just a little... We're, we're just poking around having a little fun. But yeah. That's it, guys. I think Tory Craig and Spencer did what he would be the most realistic and feasible for them. And then they bring back Trevor Ariza, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and basically the whole gang. Tory Craig... I mean, obviously, if they could get Jay Crowder, PJ Tucker, that'd be awesome. But I think Tory Craig could do just as well as as those guys maybe not as well as rebounding but hey can't get everything that's why you bring back dane wedman dane Den dwayne deadman <laughs>